Folks, hope you're having a very, very, very good day. It is time for some more hobby nightmares. If you like what I do, the subscribe button is down below. If you want to help the channel grow, then get over there and hit the subscribe button. Also, if you are getting any models over the next few weeks, make sure you head over to Composite Games down below on the link and use the promo code Northern Exile to get yourself 5% off your order of models or anything you want at checkout. I will be discussing... Games Workshop New King set models next week. So I will be talking about that on Tuesday next week. Um, if you're an Age of Sigmar fan, I hope you don't like Stormcast Eternals. That's all I'm saying. Because, uh, by golly, do they just love proving me right. Uh, anyway, Bob says, Howdy Northern Exile. I hope you and your family are doing well and are in good, good health. Yeah, they are. Thank you very much. Touch wood. Everything's going well. I am from the States, and I've been enjoying your content for a couple of months. Uh, please call me a Yankee, if that's okay, or Bob. If not, something generic like Bob, of course, will work. Okay, done that with you. Thank you very much, Mr. Exile. Also, please feel free to take a sip of tea whenever you want whilst you read this. I am currently drinking a strong cup of Twining's orange and cinnamon style spice with honey whilst writing this. You big tart. What are you drinking that for? Get yourself... A multi Yorkshire tea. Don't be putting that shit past your lips. Unless you've got a sore throat, then that's fine. No problem. But yeah, sort your life out, son. Get some Yorkshire tea. My story is about my Axis and Allies nightmare and not Warhammer. Okay, okay, well, it's fine. Other war games do exist. I have never played Warhammer and the reasons will be mentioned later. I found out about the lore through people like Arch, Sargon of Akkad, and other channels right before COVID. I, I, I love how you can know somebody's political leanings just by who they watch. Uh, <laughs> I feel in love with the lore and look forward to getting some models in the future. I apologise for my grammatical errors and misspellings. Uh, misspellings. <laughs> sorry, 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 guys, sorry. That was all me. He wrote that properly. That was me. Miss Sperrings. <laughs> I'm an idiot. I'm a moron. I had struggled with reading and writing in elementary school. You're not the only one, apparently. And the school left me behind. I did get lots of tutoring, but I still struggle with grammar and writing, even after tutoring, and all my schooling, including several uni courses. Thank God for the spell checker. Please do not read the PS at the bottom on the, of the email in the video. If this gets uh, put, uh, put into one, thank you, Mr. Northern Exile. Yeah, I won't. I haven't even copied it onto the script here, so no worries. I have been a fan of board games and tabletop games for years. I grew up in rural Michigan. When I say rural, that means I had dial-up internet until we moved out of state due to my dad's job. And we lived over five miles away from the nearest paved road. Wow. You forget there are places like that in the US. There are lots of places in the US that are just out there. It's not like England. Everywhere in England's pretty much done. You know what I mean? It's pretty much here. Um, but the US, my god, man, it's ridiculous. Uh, the nearest village where I went to school and where the local uh, bush, the local bus, was a 12-minute drive at 55 miles an hour. My only nearby obsession was Star Wars and military games. Because of my geographic location and family's views on stuff like that. The Star Wars hobby turned into an obsession. It got to the point where it was an unhealthy obsession. The obsession was a coping mechanism for elementary aged me. The reason for this was that at the time my mother was on death's door. And I had a front row seat. I am the eldest of my parents' children. My mother is healthy now and my folks have had several more kids after me and my younger two siblings. Even with my parents focusing on my mother's health, they still were good parents uh, by banning me from Star Wars. Um, I'm not sure that's right. I'm not sure they're good parents for banning you from seeing Star Wars. You know? This was for several years, which was the best thing for me. Okay. So, to replace the lack of games uh, that I now had, my folks bought me a game called... Axis and Allies around my entry into junior high. I'm sorry, I will stop stopping in a minute, but it's not okay for you to watch 
you know, make-believe wars with no blood and guts in it at all. You know, with little, with little like, green dudes in it. But it's okay for you to, like, do games with actual, like, you know, Third Reich people in it and actual warfare and stuff. I don't understand the logic there. Uh, my dad promised me that when my mother was at a religious retreat, we would play the game. Well, the time came, and my father, sister, and brother and I all played. We played a week-long game. I mean, we were playing almost six hours a day, and I enjoyed every single minute of it. So, after that, every time my mother went on a trip for a couple of days, we played Axis and Allies for days. It was after one of these trips, the nightmare happened to me. My younger three siblings are around a decade younger than me. This detail is very important for my, for my nightmare, which happened when my mother returned after a convention that was about four days long. Well, my father, little brother, who was only a couple of years younger than me, and myself started our game before my mother had even left the house. My father was playing Japan and Germany, whilst my brother was playing USSR and the USA. I decided to challenge myself. And play the British. Good lads. This was Axis and Allies 1941. After two days, my father had taken several of my African and Asian territories. He was also creaming my little brother on the Russian front. I don't want you to say creaming my little brother, man. That doesn't sound very good. On the Russian front. And at a couple of American islands. He was also making the Blitch look like sunshine and rainbows. I mean, he had so many planes that we had to get a piece of paper with the number of planes he had, just to keep track of them. It was upwards of 40 planes, just on the western front alone. After day two, my younger brother and I really started scheming late into the night. We, st we started the next day, still on the back foot, but with our new plan, we were reinvigorated. We started to remake our armies to be far more infantry-based. I remember that by the end of the third day, there were over 50 infantry units in Britain alone and I had started to shoot down my dad's planes over and over. My brother also saw some success, but not as much as I did. We finished day three with a ton of, uh, of change on the board, but my father's German faction was severely depleted of planes and resources. Okay, I'm going to take a sip of tea. I like this so far. This is good. Once again, I don't get why Star Wars isn't allowed, and this is, but, you know... My brother and I went to bed happy and prepared to turn the table on my father the next day. On the fourth day, my brother retook Moscow and some other prime territories from my, both my dad's Germans and the Japanese. I had retaken some minor territories back, but I had pretty much just kept shooting down my dad's planes. We played late into the night until my mother returned home, which was about midnight if my memory serves correctly. My dad said that he wanted to sleep in the next morning. The reason for this is because we did not let him do so whilst mum was away. So, we slept in that morning. This was a major mistake on our part. Because the baby siblings, who were toddlers at the time, did not sleep in. But they got out of their beds. They wanted to play our game. Well, they played with the models and thought that the map was their new canvas with every parent's favourite marker. Yup, my baby siblings somehow found a pavement, a permanent marker and dry erase marker where they had uh, plastered lines all over the map. They then tried to clean up their mess and put away the board. The board was very hard to fold up, and e even for me as a preteen, uh, being very complex. So for a toddler, it was kind of impossible to do correctly. As a result of this, the board was ripped and really messed up. Well... I had shown up to the table when my little siblings were trying to put the game away. I am not proud of my reaction, but I made such a ruckus in mourning my game that I woke my parents. They understood my pain, but corrected my behaviour like good parents should. They also corrected my baby siblings the best that they could for toddlers. My baby siblings were not being malicious, but trying to imitate their older brothers and father. I have come to realise that this is just the way little kids show people that they love them. They are starting to get to the age where board games and my other hobbies are becoming more interesting to them too. So I'm thinking about driving to my local nerd comic book shop and getting some games to start playing with them. That's a good idea. Very good idea. Because of religious reasons, games like Warhammer 40k are not permitted in my folks' house. Again, but World War II is? 
Like, I don't get it, dude. It, it, this is the hypocrisy that I, comes up a lot. Um, you know, I've, I've, I've started learning through the Jewish thing, right? There's a lot of hypocrisy out there in religious families. You know, you can't play with these make-believe heroes, but you can play with this very real, very troublesome past event. That's fine. But, you know, don't you dare start painting a goblin. How dare you? What's wrong with you? I don't know. It's just weird. Uh, this is fine because I'm living at home whilst attending university to try to get my prerequisites to becoming a, vet a veterinarian. Good for you, man. Do you have any recommendations for good board games or tabletop games other than Warhammer? Uh, ones that you'd be allowed to do? No. Because if you're not allowed to do, like, you know, Star Wars, Legion and stuff, I can't see how you'd be able to do any others. Um, maybe Battletech. It's just robots. So maybe that. Maybe that might work. I do look forward to getting uh, more into tabletop games like 40k in the future after I move out, though. I really like the lore around the Orcs, the Imperial Guard, and the and the Eldar. And I think the Blue, the blue Space Communists sound cool. <laughs> I assume you mean the Tau. I apologise for the corny joke, Tau players. Yeah, you do. I really, I really do like the way that they look, though. Mr. Northern Exile, do you have any recommendations of somebody who wants to start 40k as a hobby in the future? Yeah, um, Combat Patrol... Don't buy from Games Workshop and go with your gut feeling of what you think's cool. Do not go about what is good in the game. Because the game changes every fucking week, dude. So do not do the game, alright? Well, do do the game, but, but don't base your, your choice of army on the game. There's a bad way to do it. Think about what you think is cool and go with that. So do Orcs or Tau, I would do. Go and get your combat patrol, or whatever starter box set there is for those two armies, and go with that. That's what I would do. Um, okay, the rest is just all... Oh, 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 yeah, it's the same question. Okay, well, thank you very much, Bob. Cheers, mate. And uh, good luck with your with your stuff. Good luck with, with, your, with your models there. Um, Jason says... Hi, North. This is a really short one, mate, so bear with me as it's mainly a question. Okay, it is very short as well, buddy hell. Uh, a, girl I, a, a girl I met at the hobby store and I that I ended up being with for two years just broke up with me a few months ago. Oh, I'm very sorry to hear that. It was out of the blue, and she just told me that she needed to go and find herself, as we are both in our 20s, and she's not ready to settle down whilst I am. Now she's back insisting we get back together, but I am seeing another woman, who I have not told her about yet. What do I do here? My ex tells me she didn't realise what it was like having having no one to look out to look out for you, and that she missed the hell out of me. I do still love her, and she seems sincere. I need some neutral advice here, man. Anyways, thank you, fuck you, bye, Jason. <laughs> okay, cheers. Um, that, was, that was short and sweet. Um, I'm going to be honest with you, dude. Do not get back with this woman. I'm telling you now, if she did it once, she'll do it again. Do you know what I find insulting about this? Listen to this bit. My ex tells me she didn't realise what it was like having nobody to look out for you. Yeah? Welcome to being a man. Welcome to being a man. How is that relationship equality working out for you? Right? Yeah. No one gives a shit about you. Yeah, well, that's what we deal with every single day. Thank you. That's what we deal with all the time. So, you know, my heart bleeds. Here is the world's smallest violin and all that, playing just for you, my, dar my darling. All right? Uh, we're men. We, we do this every day. No one gives a shit about us. Nobody. In fact, everybody, it seems like most of the world wants us dead most of the time. You know? Le it really does. It really does. You know, male mental health is woefully underfunded. Dads don't get any help from the government, it seems, when it comes to seeing their own children. We are at the bottom of the totem pole when it comes to support and in all things. So, you know, go fuck yourself. You now know how it feels. Um, dude, she's coming back to you out of fear because nobody else wants her. She, she woefully overestimated her own hotness and her own... Uh, relationship market value. And no sane man wants her. Nobody wants her. The men that she thought she could get, she can't get. She can't get the Henry Cavills, right? 
She can't get the, 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 the 10 out of 10s because very few women can. So what does she do? She comes back to Joe Average. She comes back to you. All right? I don't know what you look like, but, you know, if you don't look like Henry Cavill to her, you're probably looking like Joe Average. That's how they, that's how they see us most of the time. You know? It's your personality that brings things out. And there's obviously another woman on the scene because you're, you, you're a catch. And another woman has realised that you are a catch. Stick with that girl. This other girl is with you. She, 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 she is enjoying your company. Stick with the new girl. Get, keep, keep the old one away. She made her bed. She needs to sleep in it. I'm sorry if you love her, dude. But, you know, you cannot trust this girl anymore. If you get back with her... How do you know she's not just going to turn around one day and say, you know what, this was a mistake, it's not working out. Okay, bye. I know because I did this when I was younger, I was stupid. Alright? Uh, my, my first proper serious, serious girlfriend split up with me out the blue. It's out the blue, split up with me. Broke my heart. And then I got with a really nice girl shortly after that. Really nice, hotter girl as well after that, you know. And then the first one came back on the scene and I thought with my, with my small pea brain, because I was young... Thought, oh, well, I love this girl. I need to get back with her. And I did. I split up with the hot girl. And I went back with this with this other one. And she split up with me a few weeks later. So, oh, yeah, this was a mistake, you know. All right, thank you. Yeah, you ruined my past relationship to get back with me. And now, yeah, okay, fine. Do not trust these women, dude, who do this. If they split up with you, they've made their bed and they need to go away and never come back. All right? That's it, because you can't. Trust them again. That's it. They've broken your heart once. Don't let them back in. Don't let them back in. Whatever you do. Alright? Not in this situation anyway. Don't get me wrong. There'll be other situations. Like, say like, uh, you know, um, if circumstances like like distance and things like that, you split up for those reasons. You know, there are, there are different reasons why you should get back with a girl. This ain't one of them. If she dumps you out the blue because she wants to find herself, do you know what that means, Jason? This is going to be hard for you to hear, my friend. So maybe go to a quiet room and bury your head in a pillow while she listens to it, right? Do you know what that means? I need to go and find myself, but only 20. We're only in our 20s. She's gone to get some dick, dude. She's gone to get some dick. Maybe she's had some. She's had her fill, and now she wants to come back. Don't get pulled into it you've got another girl a good girl who wants to who actually wants to be with you give that girl a chance don't go back to this one all right tell her to fuck off tell her to get in the sea you deserve better all right moving on uh woody says hello mr exile hello woody thank you for selecting my story to read most people call me woody so please feel free to do the same if you please Apologies for the story length, as I was having issues abridging it, but keeping the necessary details. I have been listening to you for the best part of a few weeks, as I paint my miniatures and decided to share my experience with you. If you have not already poured yourself a cup of tea before reading this, this you may need one for the amount of commentary that this story might need. Okay. It's not that long. You're okay. You're alright. It's not one of the longest ones we've had. Um... As a warning, this story starts out pretty heavy with talks of death and self-deletion. And I understand if you do not feel comfortable sharing this with the rest of your viewers. No, I, I gave it a skim last night. It was alright. It was okay. For a quick background, um, I am a 13-year veteran of the United States military. Well, thank you very much for your service, my friend. And I have a half decade of law enforcement experience. Uh, thank, you for service once thank you for your service once again. I was injured during a military training event back in 2022 and sadly had to, stay, had to take a step back from both careers shortly after. About two weeks after leaving my law enforcement career, my partner was ambushed and killed by, by a gunman whilst on patrol. Oh my god, that's horrible, man. Between his death and my own slump from being partially disabled, I spiralled into a self-loathing depression to which I almost did not survive. After a couple of months, I found myself uh, one night half deep into a bottle of Angel's Envy bourbon and my own pistol in my mouth. Maybe it was my shitty choice of ammo or my hindered state of mind for getting my manual of arms, but when I pulled the trigger, I heard a click, but no bang. Well, you wouldn't hear the bang. 
Uh, <laughs> I don't think you'd be. I don't think you'd be hearing the bang. Um, understanding the second chance I had just received, I went upstairs to my sleeping children, kissed them both on the head, and proceeded to lie down next to my wife. Dude, dude, that is that is not good. That is not good. My God, man, you can't can't be doing that. You can't be doing that. Not with your kids in the house, dude. That that's that's take a firm step back here, right? Um, I've said it before and I'll say it again. Making that decision's like the most personal and kind of selfish thing you can do, right? It is. It is incredibly selfish. I know a lot of people these days will be like, oh well, you know, you've got to be understanding of people's feelings. No, no, I don't. Not not in this. Okay? There are people you are leaving behind that you're going to devastate. And I understand you're not always in the right frame of mind when you're doing stuff like this. But it does come a time when you have to take responsibility for your own actions. Alright? Not the, not the booze, not the drugs, not any of that. It was you who made that decision, right? The ultimate decision. Unless you're really out of your mind, you know what I mean, with, with then, then, then fine. But uh, it doesn't seem like you were, were to do that with your kids in the house, man. You need... I don't care if you're alright now. Get yourself to therapy. This second, this instant. Go and find a therapist, don't care who it is. Go find some help, right? Because who's to say you're not going to circle the drain again? You need to protect those kids, protect your family, and get yourself sorted out, all right? Before I go anywhere else with this story, you need to do that, even if it's just for me, all right? Even if it's just for me, go and get yourself sorted out. Go and talk to somebody, all right? Even if you, even if you feel fine now, go and talk to somebody. All right. The next morning, I woke up and started getting my kiddos ready for daycare. Whilst doing so, my son brought a couple of little green army men to me and asked if I can if he can bring them to school. It took me back, seeing the joy in this bright hazel eyes and the smile on his face as he pored over the details of each model and pretended to fight with them. At that point, I decided to take a page from his book and pick up a hobby that did the same for me. Mate, Again, can you imagine how different his morning would have been if you'd have succeeded with what you were trying to do there? Just think on that. Think on that. You know, I'm going to be pretty harsh with you in my responses here because I think that was a pretty shitty thing that you nearly did there. Very nearly. Uh, immediately after dropping the kiddos off at daycare, I made a beeline for the nearest hobby shop. As I walked into the store... I was completely overwhelmed by the amount of board games, miniatures, and other game-related paraphernalia lining the shelves. The single employee standing behind the counter, later identified as one of the owners of the store, greeted me, greeted me with a smile and asked if I needed help with anything. Not knowing my ass all from my elbow when it comes to tabletop games, I asked him about Warhammer 40k and if he could help me start my army. I told him I was into 3D printing and wanted to print some custom pieces to fit an army but was more than willing to purchase the bulk of the units from the store. Okay. Try that in the games workshop, see how far you get. <laughs> After a brief pause, the store owner told me that the Warhammer community did not approve of 3D printing. Uh, yes, we do. Yeah, we do. It's games workshop that don't. And that Games Workshop would punish stores if they heard of a player using 3D printed models in lieu of, in of the expensive Games Workshop plastic they sold in store. Yeah, entire armies, yes. Shoulder pads and bits, no. That's fine. He then directed me towards his Star Wars Legion display and explained how 3D printing was not only accepted, but appreciated by the community, if done well. The store manager continued by saying that there were plenty of Legion players in the vicinity so I would have a healthy list of potential opponents. I decided to purchase a starter box of Empire vs Rebels and immediately went home and started assembling and painting the unit inside. I have always been drawn towards the Empire and decided to go hard on those units. Good taste, man. Good taste. If there is a British faction in a setting... Be the British faction. Over the next few months, I found only one opponent in the area, but was able to battle him about half a dozen times. A close friend of mine, sadly who is not into the hobby, joked about me being like Iron Man, 
not because I'm rich, a playboy or a philanthropist, but because I would I would lose the match only to rebuild my list, make up for my shortcomings in the previous battle and try to win again. This is where my 3D printing came in clutch. Wanting to display my units with their exact loadout, I would print the 3D models and test them out in the next battle. If the unit did particularly well, or I enjoyed how it played, I would purchase the Star Wars Legion unit from the local store. That's a really good way of using, uh, of using 3D printing, man. After months of building, painting, playing and rebuilding, I saw there was a, a Legion World Open Qualifiers occurring at PAX. Alright, in just over a month's time. Although I'm more of a narrative player, I decided to give it a go to see how I would fare against some of the nation's best. Out of the 64 opponents, I did not have any delusions that I would place well, but I did not want to end in last place. I applied for the open post position in the tournament and got into contact with the event organizer, named Nick. When asked about my army, I confirmed that some of it was 3D printed, but were exact, pro uh, but were exact proxies of the units they resembled. Nick asked for pictures of the army and subsequently approved them on the spot. I have attached some photos of my units. If you'd like to check them out and pass on your judgment on them, that'd be grand. Okay. Alright, let, let me have a little look-see. Um, okay. Um, because of what you've sent me here, man, okay, I need to say this just for other people. Um, do not, do not send me pictures of your kids. Alright? I don't care how cute they are. I don't care what they look like or, or, or what they're doing. I, I don't want them on my computer. And I don't want them, you know, it, it's not, I don't want to see them, all right? Uh, for very good reasons. Well, there are many reasons. One, you shouldn't be showing pictures of your kids with, strang with strangers. That's that's one. And, and two, um, I am a stranger, but I'm also a public figure, kind of. I know that sounds really weird. But uh, yeah. Uh, you do not want to do that with me because, uh, one, I'm not going to share them because, you know, that's wrong. They're, they're your kids and they deserve their own privacy. And uh, we have thousands of people watching these these videos and I can't put that up, all right? So please don't get offended that I'm not using the picture of your kids, but, um, you know, why would I? That, that's a really, really stupid thing to do. So, not on your part, on my part. It'd be really silly of me to put it up there. So, here is your Star Wars Legion army. Let's have a little look-see, shall we? Du -du 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 -du. Here we go. Ooh. Tell you what, for a first-time painter, you ain't bad, dude. You ain't bad at all. Those are pretty cool. I'll have to make that a bit smaller, though. There we go. Those are cool, man. Yeah, well done. Well, well done. Got another image here. Same army, I think. Same army, anyway. Um, also, guys, if you can make them um, do me a huge favor and try and make them 1280 by 720, that would be a lot easier for me to do. But these do look pretty cool. I love the bounty hunter on the end. Dude, this is how cool Star Wars Legion looks. I might need to get me some of these. I might start playing Star Wars Legion. If you've played Star Wars Legion, folks, and you're in the comment section, let me know how it plays. Let me know how it plays. Because uh, I am looking for a new war game, as yesterday's video shows. Some Jubaks. Wow, these look brilliant. Oops, sorry. These look absolutely spectacular. Look at those. I'm going to leave those up for a bit. That's great, dude. That's just peak Star Wars right there. I might need to get into this. Do you recommend Star Wars Legion, folks? Tell me in the, in the comment section down below. And I, I, I will go on your judgment. Uh, due to me just starting this type of hobby, I understand my painting is far from perfect, but I love them all the same since it was my blood, sweat and tears that brought them to life. No, mate, they look brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Fast forward to day one of the tournament. I was due to face off against four opponents, starting at 10 uh, 1,000 hours, 10 a.m. 
and ending at 2300 hours, 11pm. To begin this Swiss round event, my first opponent was a tournament regular and told me not to be discouraged by some of the sweatier players I would eventually meet over the next few days. He was a real bro, explaining some of the rules I had previously misread and answering the many questions I had about units and tactics. Although, the, although he waffle stomped me into the ground, I enjoyed the match as I felt like I learned more in that match than I did in the half dozen matches I'd played against my lovely local opponent. My next match went about the same, with opponent number two being quite friendly and helpful with rules and even remarking on my custom units and how he liked how I based them. Mr. Exile, I strongly suggest you take a, a tip of C, a tip of C, a sip of tea before this next part, as my enjoyment was quickly deflated by my next opponent. Here we go, is the nightmare. We're getting to it. Oh no. You're having such a good time as well. After receiving my next match information, I located the table and started lining my now war veteran units up on the margins. After a few minutes, my opponent, who we'll refer to as Mike, showed up and promptly plopped his carrying case on the opposite side of the table. I confirmed he was to be my opponent and began explaining my army list as he presented his. While I was showing which of my models were 3D printed, Mike cut me off midway through my explanation, stating how, and I quote, tournaments do not allow non asmodi plastic, but I'm not going to make a big deal out of it, unquote. I proceeded to tell him that I understood, but I'd got the list approved by the event organiser prior, prior to the event, and he'd seen my models. Mike then stated, and I quote, Yeah, I get you, but I'm just letting you know, again, I'm not going to make a big deal out of it, but some opponents won't play with people if they 3D print their models, unquote. Understanding he was getting flustered by my audacity to print less than a dozen models on my army with, with close to 50 men, I attempted to de-escalate the situation by telling Mike I am very new to this hobby and was playing mostly for the fun of it. Mike would, would not relent though, finally calling a judge to the table to see, let, let me see what the TO has to say about your models. What? He just said it was fine. He wasn't going to make a big deal out of it. So what's the issue? He said he was fine. He's not going to make a big deal out of it. You say fine. And then he makes a big deal out of it. Whatever. For the first time that day, I started to feel truly defeated as I did not expect this level of pettiness so to be directed towards a new player. Sure, I expected some people to be hard and fast with the rules, but I did not expect anyone to hold that to, and I and I did not expect anybody to hold their punches whilst playing the game. But arguing over a few models seems a little pedantic to me. Mike knew I lost both my previous rounds, as he did himself, which took us both out of the running for the top three. This match was for, was the first for the losers bracket, which I was more than fine being a part of. As my mental fortitude started to crack and my sanity began sinking into the darkness, a beacon of light began approaching from my left side. Walking towards our table, my hero approached with his red badge hanging from his neck in full display. The large man stopped at our battlefield, looked towards Mike and asked what the issue was. Mike pointed at my army and said, Hey Nick, what do you think about this guy's army? Nick looked at my army, at me, then to Mike and said, uh, yeah, it's a good army. Very good. Mike replied and proceeded to say, uh, Yeah, but there are 3D printed models in there. It's, n it's not up to the opponent to decide. Is it not up to the opponent to decide if the other army is legit, if it is printed? Unquote. To my serendipitous surprise, Nick stated, uh, No, it's up to the event organizer, which is me. I already approved this list and the army build. Mike, not wanting to be so easily de defeated, replied, But he won't be able to play in a tournament with his army though. Nick went on, Dude, look around. This is the fucking World Open Qualifier. Oh no, sorry. Um, Nick. Oh, Nick went on, Dude, look around. This is the fucking World Open Qualifier. I am running the show here, and I am not kicking him off the table, but one of you can leave if you cannot agree on the legitimacy of his army, all right? As Nick strolled away with his angelic grace, Mike turned back to me and told me, whatever, I guess we can play, but don't expect me to take it easy on you. 
At this point, we have wasted approximately 15 minutes discussing my army and had maybe an hour and a half left of the event to attempt to complete six rounds of play. Mike brought out his brand new mostly Ewok army, telling me that what they lack in strength, they make up for in numbers. For those who play Legion, my army had a meagre 8 activations, and his had 14 activations. For those who do not play Legion, this gave him 6 more moves than me every single round. Our game mode was capture supplies, which meant there are 5 supply drops on the map that can be secured. Once secured, you can move to the objective with the unit that captured it. But that captured it. The game usually turns into a match of uh, keep away if you have more objectives than your opponent. I understood I was already going to be at a disadvantage, but I was too bullheaded to give up that easily. You're not bullheaded, mate. You're a war gamer. All right. You play until you literally can't win, and even then, most of the time, if it's a friendly game, you just carry on playing. As our match started, Mike was constantly on his phone and not engaging with me at all as I made my moves and explained what I was attempting to do. Even though his guys were, were as tough as tissue paper, the dice gods were not smiling upon me, and I was unable to stop him from taking three out of the five objectives after turn one. Immediately at the start of turn two, Mike told me he had to make a phone call. He made the call at the table, and I could tell he was not in a good mood. Without getting into his plight, he, his issue seemed to be important. After about five minutes on the phone, he hung up and told me how there were some issues on the home front. I asked if he needed to leave to take care of it, to which he said he lived too far away and that his ride was also at this tournament. Mike continued the game, rolling the first move of round two. On his move, he took his unit of murder bears, quote unquote, that controlled the middle objective and moved them closer to his deployment zone and out of range of my troopers. Maybe it was Mike making a joke, or maybe it was his way of pouring salt into the wound. But he looked me dead in the face and said, Hmm, good luck trying to get this point from me. I decided to take my move, but was unable to activate the only unit that could have gotten in range I needed, I needed it to be in. Halfway through my move, Mike exclaimed he had to make a call again and use the back bathroom, proceeding to walk away from the table. I stood there, dumbfounded, with plastic in my hand, and I had no idea what to see or do, as I'm not going to tell a full-grown man that he can't use the bathroom, not that he gave me much of a choice in the matter, to say anything before walking away. Dude, it seems to me that this guy's ahead on points, and he's kind of stalling. Do you know what I mean? Is anyone else getting that, or is it just me? Doesn't half seem like he's stalling to me. After waiting alone at the table for over 15 minutes, yeah, he's stalling. He's stalling. Nick made another appearance. Nick walked up to me, and I admit that I was not hiding my confusion and irritation at my current plight. I could tell he was somewhat aware of the situation, but confirmed it when he, when he asked, Hey man, how's the game going? I replied by letting him know that Mike had some personal issues to take care of and was visiting the porcelain throne. One second, I'm just going to um, drink a bit of tea here. Alright, after looking at the board and seeing I was behind on points, Nick asked, Do you think he is taking advantage of you? His question took me by surprise. I could not believe he was looking out for me and was technically giving me an out if I wanted. Sadly, neither my pride nor my bullheaded nature let me take it easy. Uh, and what I replied with, I'm not really sure. I get he's got stuff going on, but I don't want to make waves if he's having issues with it. Nick looked disappointed, but gave me a nod and told me to reach out to him if I needed anything else before walking away. I, I have a feeling this guy's a known entity. I've got a funny feeling this guy's a known entity. After another 15 to 20 minutes, Mike finally returned to the table, just after the 30 minutes warning call out by Nick. Sadly, I was already defeated at this point and just went along with the rest of the game taking my third loss. Upon the match concluding, Mike exuberantly called out his victory, exclaiming how his murder bears would be feasting on my, my still mostly standing army. 
Stepping aside from the table, my world came crashing down. I felt as if all this hard work I'd put into the hobby was a waste, as I'd be forced to face guys like Mike if I wished to keep playing against others who weren't in my local area. I could not play my fourth round that day as I felt physically worn out from the round and luckily, opponent number four was in the same boat. We decided to roll for the win, to which he came out on top. I walked my gear back to my Airbnb, picking up a case of beer from a gas station on the way. Though it took me a moment and a case of lager, I decided I would play the next day, but would play haphazardly, maybe throwing a wrench into my opponent's plans. I would most likely not win anything, but I was hoping to confuse them enough to make it somewhat fun. The next day went by without any issues, as most of my opponents were just there for the fun of it, but I could tell I had lost the spark for the game. I ended up winning one match, but lost all the rest. I decided to stick around for the announcement ceremony at the end of the event, but understood my name would of course not be called. I did not know, I did not know the guys who scored first or second place, as I played almost entirely in the loser bracket, but my first opponent, the nice guy, actually got third place. And with that, he was given an invitation to the World's Open and a set of semi-clear red attack die. Surprisingly, I ended up, I ended up getting 8th place out of all the, the Empire players, but 53rd in total. To which I was rewarded with an alternative Emperor Palpatine card. My day started taking an immediate turn as I, accept, I accepted the card with childlike glee. As I walked back to my bag, another player I, I had a previous match with stopped me and gave me a few of his extra alternative cards after seeing my joy of the first one that I got. I was completely dumbfounded by his generosity and thanked him profusely. With my newfound vigour, I began placing my trophies in my bag. That's awesome, dude. That's awesome. As I began walking out, opponent number one, the nice guy, walked up to me and gave me a congratula con congratulatory fist bump along with a well played. I reciprocated the gesture and told him I was happy to play against the guy who did so well. He smiled and handed me a, a small baggie filled with red dice. Here, he said. I already have a few sets of these and, uh, well, since you knew, why don't you take them? I was in utter disbelief. The sheer generosity of him and the others blew me away. Again, I thanked him and tried to show how much it meant to me. He simply smiled and said, No problem, man. Just keep playing and pass it forward. As we wrapped up our, our interaction, a familiar figure approached. Hey man, you ready to go home? Mike came up from, from behind my first opponent and gave a playful smack on his shoulder. Yeah Mike, we have a bit of a walk to get to the car, my first opponent replied. Oh my god. Oh my god, how are they friends? How are they friends? At the end of the day, I am happy the Star Wars Legion, Legion community as a whole is like this. I have no intention of playing in another tournament with my units, and I think my matches moving forwards will be between friends in a casual setting. By the by, my four-year-old son and I are getting into Warhammer 40k together. I am building an Astra Militarum army, and he has showed a love for the green skins. I'll attach a photo of his first box, and a beautiful smile that made me start the, this amazing journey. Thanks for reading my story, and I hope there weren't too many ty typos or run-on sentences. If you ever find yourself in Northern Pennsylvania, let me know. I think I owe you a pint or two for all the stories that you've shared, uh... And thank you for sharing this one for me. Thanks a bunch, Woody. All right, man, that's brilliant. That's fantastic. Um, again, I'm sorry you couldn't show that picture because, you know, um, I'm protecting you and your kid there. Um, you know, I, you, you can't you can't be showing the pictures of random kids in public. It's not right. Um, but on the flip side, um, I'm really, 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 really glad you're still with us. And I'm really, really, really glad you didn't take that that silly option at the start of this video but just remember okay go and get yourself some help i know you feel all right now but i'm telling you now go and try and get yourself some help somewhere could be anywhere because everybody should speak to somebody at some stage because everybody's got something going on especially in, in in the day and age that we're in now uh, you've had some trauma in your life you've had some things going on make sure you get help for them my dude all right um because you never know when the next attack, uh, attack might come and you want to be there for your kids. Alright? So do that for me. 
please, if you could, do that for me. Uh, get out there, find somebody, speak to them. Whether it be a therapist or a counsellor, whatever you need, get out there, go and get it. Right, you are, you are a veteran, are you not? I think you said you were a veteran at the start. Uh, yeah, you did. So there, there must be a way for you to go and get therapy quite cheap if you're a veteran. I think there is a way to do it in the US, but I can't remember. Um, what My ex's family, a lot of them were ex-military, and a lot of them did get help and therapy and things like that. Anyway, investigate it. Go to your rep, investigate it, see what's out there. Um, but do that for me, please, so, so we keep you around, because you never know what might happen, and you never know what your reaction to it might be. You don't want to leave your kids and your missus or your partner, you know, whoever it is, on their own. That's not right. And you especially don't want to do it in the way you were going to do it. And Because what you're doing is, if you you and your family are, are in a very expensive restaurant, you're walking out and you're leaving them with the bill. But times that by 70 million of how bad it would feel, right? That's what you're about to do. So please take stock. Serious, serious stock. I'm really glad you found a Star Wars Legion. Your story actually makes me want to try it. So I think I might buy myself a set. But if you've ever played Star Wars Legion, uh, do you like it as much as Woody does? If you do, let me know in the comment section down below. If you don't, also let me know. Let me know what the game's like, because I'm looking for a new war game, and that might be the one for me. You never know. Anyway, I love you all a long time. I will speak to you on Monday. Have a wonderful weekend, guys. Absolutely enjoy yourself. I hope the sun's shining where you are. And if it's not, I'll see you on Monday. Stick with me. Love you. Bye.